Warzone has been out for almost two years now and everybody you face is just getting better. But no matter how many hours you put into this game, you feel as if you just cannot keep up anymore. Now, trust me when I say this, I have been in your exact same position. For many Warzone players, this may be your first battle royale because of the pandemic. Warzone is not for the faint of heart and the fact that you're even taking the extra bit of time to watch this video proves that you're already on your path to greatness. Today, I'm going to be deep diving into every step that I took personally to improve my Warzone gameplay. And a few of those steps we're going to be talking about are going to include in-game settings, mechanics to win more fights, and then end-game decision-making. But the number one question you may be asking now is, where do I start? So the first thing we're going to discuss pretty quickly here is going to be your in-game settings. So this may be for only PC players. It's not going to affect console as much. Now, these few settings we're going to be changing are going to make sure that your PC is working at its maximum potential, and it's also going to help with your clarity on the map. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is go down into our options menu, go into graphics and go into the quality tab. Now, what I like to do is set my field of view to 120 because it does increase what you can see on your screen. As you can see from the first shot compared to now, we can see a lot more on the map. Now, one thing worth noting with field of view, you do get two different types of ADS field of view options as well. First one is independent and the next one is affected. The default option in ADS FOV is going to be set to independent, which means you're going to have AD FOV when ADS, no matter what you set your regular FOV to. Now, what that can do for you is it's going to make sure that everything appears to be more zoomed in, but it can also increase your visual recoil. So when you are shooting, it may be a little bit harder to control. But when you do switch that setting to affected rather than independent, you will get a wider field of view when ADS matching your 120 FOV. And it will also reduce your visual recoil, making it a little bit easier to win fights. Next setting is going to be camera movement. This one's going to be pretty straightforward. Just set that to the lowest possible. Now for the next section of your graphics tab, it's going to be your texture settings. Personally, I keep a couple things enabled and I keep my textures at normal just so the game does look a little bit better for when I'm recording videos and streaming. Now, if you didn't care about quality whatsoever and just wanted to get maximum performance, I would turn your texture resolution down to very low as it will save you quite a few frames. As for the rest of the options, there's really not much of a change if you do change them so i keep them a little bit higher so it does look a little bit better now for the next tab in the post processing effects you do want to make sure that everything is turned off except for your anti-aliasing now for the next tab the post processing effects i would recommend turning everything off as low as possible but you can turn your filmic strength to 1.0 if you do have your anti-aliasing turned off as well as it does reduce some visual noise, but I noticed that I do get a couple more frames when I have it all the way off. That setting, I'll keep up to you. You can choose what you want to use, but as long as you're not using the max anti-aliasing, you will save quite a lot of frames having it set to off or 1x. Now for your shadows, there are two things that you want to keep enabled, which are your cache settings, which do help with your frame rate. Everything else I would turn off. And in the interface tab, you really don't have to change too much, but there are two things that I would change, which are your minimap shape and your minimap rotation. I would have it set to square and enabled as it does help quite a bit when you're mid fight. If you wanted to try out some different audio settings, I do have two that I enjoyed. I used boost low and midnight mode. Now, the reason why I suggest two different types of audios is because there are different headphones for different reasonings. For my DT990 Pros, I used midnight mode, which did help quite a bit with the clarity of the sound. And for the Astros, the Astros do have a higher bass profile. So boost low did seem to help quite a bit. There are several different audio things you can do, though. You can go to anybody and they'll probably tell you something different. Those are just the two that I've used. And finally, we are now in the controller section, but just a fair warning, the controller section is all going to be personal preference and it all comes down to muscle memory. So do not think you're going to get any improvement just by switching to my controller settings. Personally, I would recommend sticking to one sensitivity rather than switching back and forth so you can get the muscle memory down pat. If you took a handful of professional Warzone players and put them all side by side with their sensitivities, you may see that a lot of them are within the 6 to 13 sensitivity range most of them being at six. The reason that so many people use a six sensitivity is because it is one of the most consistent ones for tracking up close and at far ranges. Having a slower sensitivity may also reduce the amount of time you may need to warm up and get your shot on point. As far as the controller that I chose to use, I use a PS5 scuff reflex controller. When you're ordering your scuff online, there are a few things you can customize such as digital triggers, which means you don't have to pull down all the way to shoot your gun. You also do get four remappable paddles on the back, which I did remove the two inner ones just so I could use my crouch and jump button. The reason I decided to do so was because it is a little bit more efficient for movement and I don't really use the other two paddles too much, so I just got in the way. Now, with that being said, I do use the default button layout, so I have my slide cancel buttons on the back of my controller and I could just focus solely on my gunfighting 
when I'm using any other button. As far as my dead zone goes, that goes as far as where your controller lets you. Personally recommend setting that as low as possible to where you don't get any stick drift. If you do have stick drift, I would increase this until it goes away because that can cause unnecessary movements that will get you killed. Now, these settings you're seeing on the screen now are going to be some of the most important ones that I would recommend changing to help with your gameplay. The first one being dynamic aim assist. This is where you're going to see a lot of rotational aim assist is what it's called. If you are moving your left stick, you will get more aim assist. This helps a ton with close range fighting. I also have my weapon aim assist set to standard and my scale aim assist with FOV set to enabled. Now, as far as scale aim assist goes, you will have a smaller aim assist box if you did switch to 120 FOV. While having it enabled, you will have a smaller aim assist box, but it will be more sticky when you are aiming at your target. When you have it disabled, your aim assist hitbox will be larger than the character's hitbox at times. This can become extremely frustrating at range, especially because you will not know exactly where the bullet lead is and your aim assist will be fighting against you. For the rest of the settings, I have my ADS behavior set to hold. I have my use and reload behavior set to contextual tap, which does help in fights a lot of the time where if you are deciding to reload your gun or if you're trying to close a door, it will know what you're trying to do. Now, for your controller movement settings, there are two things that are very important to change here. The first one being your slide behavior. You want to set that to tap. In your automatic sprint, you want to set that to automatic tactical sprint. With controller, you have the ability to only push your stick up a little bit so where you can only walk. But when you do throw it all the way up, you will be automatically tactical sprinting whenever you can. Now, after we get all of our settings switched, I want to talk about the importance of getting practice in. Whether you're only playing for 30 minutes a day or four hours a day, I would recommend putting in a little bit of practice before you get into your games. When I made the switch to controller from keyboard and mouse about a year and a half ago, I decided to do this a lot. What I did to practice and warm up my controller skills was I went to private matches on Modern Warfare 2019 and I switched the map to speedball went to free for all and set the maximum bots at regular difficulty. You can go for as long as you want. You can set the time limit to unlimited, the kill limit to unlimited. And whenever you feel like you are ready to go, I would recommend just going into it. But there is one more thing you can do if you wanted to get that extremely realistic war zone feel. You can increase the health that you have inside of these private matches. If you wanted to get a war zone equivalent, you could set the health to about 250, 300, depending on what you want to do. But if you're just working on reaction time and trying to get your flicks on point, you can set the health back down to 100. So you have to react fast. So now that you know my preferred way of warming up before I get into my actual Warzone games, there are a few techniques that I do want to teach if you guys do not know them already. So one of the most important movement tactics in Warzone is the slide cancel. And I'm sure once or twice, no matter how good you are, you have been killed by somebody using this exact technique. So to do a proper slide cancel, what you're going to want to do is combine a couple of motions. So the first step you want to do is you obviously want to run forward. And what you're going to do is just show that you can slide. So the first thing is run forward and slide. The next step is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to learn how to cancel the slide animation. So what you're going to do is you're going to run forward, slide and slide again. So the button combination here is you're going to sprint, crouch, crouch, and that's going to stop your slide. And what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to incorporate a jump into that mix. So the next set of buttons you're going to be pressing here is you're going to sprint, crouch, crouch, jump. So sprint, crouch, crouch, jump, and you're going to be up again. So when you put all those together in a fluid motion, you're going to want to press them pretty quick. So sprint, slide, slide, jump and you're gonna automatically sprint. Never take your finger off that left thumbstick. So again, we're gonna do sprint, slide, slide, jump. Sprint, slide, slide, jump. One thing worth noting is you may encounter a dead slide every so often. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is before you do a slide cancel, you're gonna to want to make sure that your gun goes up. But essentially the whole point behind slide canceling is not only to break cameras, but it also resets your automatic tactical sprint. By doing so, it allows you to move around the map a lot more fluently. So always make sure before you do another slide cancel, you want to make sure that your gun goes up rather than when it stops and goes down like this. Now, if you wanted to practice this like you would in real time and use it back to back in rapid succession, one thing you can do is find any sort of wall on the speedball map and try to use that as a doorway that you're going to be peeking in Warzone. So essentially what you're going to want to do is use this wall as a guide for what you're going to be peeking in Warzone. So when you try to sprint to the other side, try to tactical sprint, crouch, crouch, jump and peek the other side of the wall an ADS once you cross it. So when you get that movement done, it's going to look something like this. And just try to do this back to back. And do it quickly like you would in Warzone if you're trying to catch your opponent off guard. It may seem really tedious, but the more you do it, the more fine tuned your muscle memory is going to be with it, making you able to use it in real time situations. So now that you know how to slide cancel, there are a couple different things you're going to want to incorporate into this as well to make sure that you're using it to the best of its ability. Now, one thing that people do struggle with a lot of the time is centering. And what I mean by that is people are often looking at the ground when they're fighting or slide canceling because they think it may help. 
but when you are doing this you're actually limiting yourself as to what you can do when you actually get into a fight so let's take this into example if you're doing the move we just talked about with the wall here and you're going to try to slide cancel and use this to peek you're going to be looking at absolutely nobody so what you're going to want to do instead is instead of looking at the ground here try to bring your cursor to about chest level so you're ready for anything so let's say for example your centering is you looking at the ground here and you're going to do that slide mechanic that we just talked about when you're going to be peeking a corner or something like that you're going to slide and you're going to be peeking down here you're going to be aiming at their feet and it's not going to be able to do anything so when you're going to do that you're going to have to incorporate a whole nother movement into that engagement so we're going to have to slide aim in and then you're going to have to aim up again which already adds way too much time to the ttk and this guy is probably already gonna have to jump on you. Meanwhile, if you had good centering and you decided to aim at chest level, around head level maybe, you're gonna be prepared for whatever they have coming for you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do your slide mechanic and you're already aiming there. The number one thing you're gonna have to do is just get your crosshair in the right spot instead of having to go up and adjust your vertical and horizontal. So one more time with fluid motion, is you would do it here and you'd be aiming at your target. Another very important engagement tactic that you can use is the bunny hop. Now this one may be a little bit more difficult as it is something that you have to perfectly time each time you want to get a successful bunny hop. So essentially to break down the bunny hop slowly, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be automatic tack sprinting to gain maximum momentum, turn about 90 degrees. But when you also incorporate your right stick into this, it's going to look something like this, where you sprint forward, turn your left stick completely to the side, and then turn your right stick to the opposite side. So you're going to sprint forward, you're gonna do a little shimmy like that, and you're gonna keep going the same direction. And now all you have to do into this movement is you have to incorporate a bunny hop. So you have to jump to get the hang of jumping once, because even one jump can win you a fight when you're engaging, just like that. But when you wanna get a bunny hop into the mix, what you're gonna to wanna to do is jump instantly as you land from the other bunny hop. So it may be something a little bit more difficult to get the hang of, and the timing is quite difficult to nail every time. So when you want to incorporate the second bunny hop, it's going to look something like this. It's a super strong mechanic to abuse because it can break cameras as you are using automatic tack sprint while jumping in the air. Like I said, it is quite difficult to get it down pat, but once you do, it does become extremely helpful mid fight. Now with the bunny hop, you can basically do this in any direction that you choose. You do not have to do it in a straight line. You could also go behind you if you need to. So let's say while you're running away from somebody, if they're close in your tail and you can't stop to play it up in time, you may want to consider trying to do a fadeaway type bunny hop. So the first step to perfecting this movement mechanic is you're going to want to just sprint forward and ADS behind you while jumping. So you jump and ADS behind you. Do this a couple times just to get used to the movement. Get used to your 180 on your uh, controller sensitivity. And then after you get that down, you're going to want to try to figure out how to do the same thing we did before and try to do a 180 with your left stick while you're mid air to continue the bunny hop. So what you're going to want to do is you want to jump and move your left stick behind you and get ready for the bunny hop by the time you hit the ground. And you can do this any direction that you want to with your bunny hop. Once you get the timing down, it'll be pretty simple to bunny hop anywhere you would like to including even behind you. But now you have two different types of engagements. You have the slide cancel and the bunny hop. One of my favorite engagements is going to be combining these two together. So what I usually do when I use both of these successfully is I wanna find somewhere where I have cover that I can slide behind and then I can bunny hop the next direction. So let's try to put this into an example here. So what we could do is I will have a fight going on in the middle here, for example. And let's say I start losing the fight possibly. I could lay down, I could stim, I could slide behind cover. And once I get over here, this is when I use my bunny hop and I can get back into the fight. Meanwhile, he may be pushing towards me so he could have left his cover or if he's still stuck on his head glitch, I should be able to try to shoot him. So what that's going to look like in one big motion is I'll be sitting here. I'll be fighting this guy to slide bunny hop and it can completely catch your enemy off guard. You may even want to wait a second after your slide cancel to try and listen and see if you can hear anything. And if you do hear them pushing, It'd be perfect for the B hop too, because it would catch them completely off guard. But even if they aren't pushing, the B hop is still a magnificent technique that you could use to get people off head glitches because they may not be able to track your speed. The bunny hop may also be beneficial when you have a higher set of protection here, such as this box. You could B hop and aim over it while they have to just shoot your head. Both of which are super efficient and there's a lot more movement mechanics that I can talk about, but those are the main two that you're gonna wanna use to improve your KD on Warzone. I guarantee once you master these two mechanics, you will be winning more fights. So once you get a little bit more comfortable trying to do these movement mechanics back to back in a custom match by yourself, you wanna try to implement some bots here and there. And the best way to practice it is to make sure that before you kill anybody or any bot, make sure you try to do one of those movements beforehand just to get a feel for it in a real fight. So before some kills, maybe slide off to the side and get a kill. Maybe some of them you wanna bunny hop. Then sometimes you wanna practice doing both. So you wanna slide cancel into a bunny hop. 
It could be anything you want to do. Just make sure that you're doing any sort of those mechanics before you kill a bot. Now, if you want to take that even further, instead of using like an MP5 or an M4, you could use a car 98 to make sure that your centering is on point two, So you know that you're actually aiming correctly. And one thing that I might recommend using the car 98 is make it as fast as possible and just do only quick scopes to make sure that your centering is on point as fast as possible. By doing this, you're going to see a noticeable difference in how fast you react and how fast you can actually center onto people while practicing on bots. Now, one more thing you can do in this is you can use guns without attachments or you can even pick up the bots weapons so you know what it's like to use certain guns and you're always prepared even if a gun has bad recoil. Recoil control is one of the hardest hardest things to master, but once you do get the hang of it, it's easy. So now that I've given a couple different tips on how to improve your mechanics and your aim overall, I'm going to try to put that all into one thing in a solos match here while trying to describe decisions I made, rotations I made, and why I chose to fight when I did. And at the end of the game, I'm going to try to break down a couple kills that I may have gotten during the game, just so you guys can get a bigger understanding on how I played it. So the first thing you do whenever you load into a Warzone match is you want to make sure you know where the flight path is coming from. So in this instance, it's coming from docks and going straight towards Lagoon which means there are a lot of potential hot drops in this area. So we have docks, factory, mines, peak, all of which are in the zone too. We got a really nice zone where everything is pretty much in it, which means everybody's going to be kind of spread out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to land peak, which is the main hot drop. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to play top to bottom, essentially. I'm making our way from the highest point in the map to the lowest and try to get as many kills doing so. So there seems to be a lot of people going peak. I may end up going a little bit lower. Um, just because I'm not the first one down. So I'm going to go down to this tunnel here. This is my secondary drop. I'm going to make sure I get the guns here on the edge. And we're going to see if I can pull off anything crazy here. Going to just run right to the middle here. Couldn't pick up a kill. Going to loot up a little bit. Make sure we get all the stuff we need to fight. And this guy might run straight down from that little rock. So I'm going to come up a little bit. See if I can meet him halfway. I hear him in the corner here. A little easy kill there. Just play the knowledge. Know your map. Know what pushes to make and where. And since I had a speed boost, I decided to get a little aggressive. If you have this kind of advantage, you might as well try to take advantage of it, you know? So what I need right now is I need to make sure I have guns that are good for challenging at long range and some that are good for close range. This BP is not a bad idea to chow with, but it's also not my favorite. The recoil is a little weird, and I feel like I'll miss a lot of shots. So I'm going to try to find something a little bit more comfortable with. The kilo should work. And I do have enough money for respawn. We are playing buyback solos, so that is something you want to keep in mind, too. Instead of the gulag, we have buyback money. We actually just got our own loadie, so that's even better for the start. So my plan now is to try to play the high ground by taking this. You fly to the side, and you can wrap all the way around to the big one. And then from here, you can get a lot of information. You can also probably get a lot of kills just by holding it. So there is one guy up here. He got sniped from the way back corner here. So I'm going to try to chow that. When you use the automaton, it is actually quite crazy what the recoil looks like with this bipod. If you go crouch or prone while using this thing, you're going to have absolutely no recoil pretty much. And it's going to help you win a lot of fights. I'm going to try to use this thing behind me too as cover. I heard somebody zip up on me. Play your audio cues. And save your life. Audio is very, very important. Make sure you have that set correctly. And use one of those modes I mentioned earlier as well. He might push out now that I wasn't challenged. Or you can just get different angles even and try to fight him in different ways. Alright, we got him. Set a cue challenge from different angles. Got someone flying in. It's the guy that tried zipping up on me before. Another free kill. We got someone sniping directly below us. He's probably on the ledge looking down at the loadouts, if I had to guess. Muzzle flash came from the window. And he's shooting at this guy down here. The guy in the window shouldn't be able to see me. But I can definitely see this guy. I'm going to make sure I get the kill. And now I want to make sure that the guy isn't coming up on the ladder. He could have even jumped out. So there he is. He took the zip. It's a free kill. I'm pretty sure that's the guy who was sniping. Just take a second. Check your back. Make sure no one's sneaking up on you. And now I'm going to go loot this guy. And I'm probably going to go grab my perks. Alright, so when I'm going for my loadout, this guy decided to land back. He got a pretty close spawn. He's not going to have any guns. 
It's probably just gonna run, yeah. So I'm gonna grab my, my perks. I already have my class so I can get my tempered. Ghost class, whatever you will use. Get your second loadout. And then we can go for the kill here. He's not gonna be able to kill us. So free kill there. Um, now we want to focus on getting back up because I do hear a sniper behind. And as before, I did mention we went from docks to arsenal area. Or lagoon, from docks to lagoon, sorry. Um, we're going to want to make sure that we stay closer to the hot drops. There's a guy right in front of me, actually. I think he wasn't really the greatest. Um, going to take the zip back up to the top peak and we can pretty much go anywhere. With this zip, you can make it right to the top. You can get high ground right back. Pretty good rotation. You get up here and then you can go anywhere on the map. I heard another sniper towards the west. Kind of playing it a little slow just because snipers can be crazy in this. There's a lot of them in solos especially. The number one thing I hate most about solos is the amount of riot shields and snipers. We're going to take this opportunity um, to move down towards mines. There's shots down on my left. I'm going to try to get them but I'm going to keep high ground so... They're down in that tunnel, it looks like. I'm going to try to land on a ledge right here, and uh, we should be able to just use the head glitch here. Not sure what he's shooting at, but he wants to die. So I'm going to chill here for a sec. See if I can find him and just get a free beam on him. Not too sure what his plan was, just shooting in the sky, but we ended up getting the kill anyways. Alright, so we got 10 kills with 90 people up, just because of the idea of us playing high ground. Just playing from top to bottom is the, the whole plan. That's the number one play you should be playing Warzone on Caldera. This map is all about elevation. And there's a lot of it, so you gotta figure out where to push and when to push um, certain areas. So, when you're rotating outside of peak, you kinda wanna look right below you. Just to make sure nobody's sitting on the runways. And then, once you discover if there is or isn't somebody there, Typically, I like to land on the big yellow warehouse because people do like to sit in that rooftop. You can sit here for a minute, run back and forth, and see if you can hear any footsteps underneath you. Because the last thing you want to do is try to get back up here when someone's sitting in the rooftop. I don't hear anything. I'm going to ping this bounty here if I know where to go for it. And use this as some information. And get a little bit of money to make sure I can come back still. I'm going to just put down a makeshift balloon, so I'm going to shoot to him out the sky. A quick kill. And I think I'm going to take that up to my bounty. There is a car coming right towards me, though. i got to make sure I, uh, I'm aware of that. All right, he's one shot, so he got out, actually. I'm going to push, but I'm going to keep the high ground by running on the sludge here. I'm going to ADS walk though, so I don't make a whole lot of noise. Running on metal makes a lot of noise, so I just got to make sure I'm playing it smart. Listen for his footsteps instead. Okay, so it kind of seems like he just dropped his loadie down this way. I'm going to try to make my way over. Dropped it on the roof, so he's going to try to get it inside, it looks like. I'm going to play it smart still. Here's shots towards the inside of mines. That could be the guy with the pink hat. Yeah, that worked out perfect for me. There's two guys right here. One had self, one did not. Free as it can be. Play patient when you have like a situation like that. The guy could either be baiting it the complete opposite. He also dropped a UAV for us. I'm going to use that for some information as well. It looks like the two people that are on the radar are way above me, flying in the sky. And we have two guys low by the zip. There are going to be... looks like one might be in the crane, on top of the crane. And the other one is down below it. We got quite a few kills already. I'm kind of satisfied with it as of right now um, for the late game, or early game, I mean. A lot of the kills and solos do come in the late game too, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and play a little bit more passive. I won't be too aggressive with my pushing. And we're kind of just going to let the kills come to us. And what I mean by that is we're not going to be jumping into buildings like crazy. We're going to try to play power positions 
and rotate correctly. So I'm going to plan on getting this little balloon here. There's a guy. I'm not sure where he is. He might be on the red warehouse. Wherever he is, he has a good angle on me. He's on the zip here, so that's not too bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some shots into him. And I can fly directly on top of him, even, and scare him quite a bit. He's probably inside here. Land on the back side of the hut. Make sure you have cover for when you first land. He jumped all the way, so... Let's see where he ends up going. I didn't want to do that. That's not good. Right, he's very close right here on the bottom. I didn't want to mantle. It would have been a much easier fight if I hadn't yeah, mantled, I think. He's not too happy with me, but... That's alright. He can get over it. We're going to... Now play the rotation here. Um, once this zone closes, I'll know more where to go. And I can use this balloon to help guide me in the right direction. Let's see. So it looks like there's a guy right here, even. Might be able to get a free kill if he ends up running in the open. Or I should probably just rotate. Let's see. It's going to be a heavy neighborhood slash field zone. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the balloon to get to around orange here. And play that high ground. Land in the trees around here. So not many people know where I'm at. I can probably buy a self-res and a UAV here too to help with my rotation. Yeah, we're going to work from top to bottom again. We're going to try to do this the smart way. Get a UAV for rotations. Maybe I can grab that big game too if it's not too far up. Grab my UAV here. So there are a lot of pings around peak here, actually. So I'm going to try to play this a little bit slower. Lots of pings around me. I don't want to do too much because it could get me killed. We're going to go for the big game first because that'll continue the UAV. And we know he was on my level just a minute ago, so he's probably right in front of me somewhere. Now with the bounty, he does know that I'm coming because it's going to show a red threat. It looks like he might be down in the tunnels. Yes, so we're going to go down towards the tunnel area. And we're going to figure out exactly where he is with some sound cues. While tracking the bounty still. I could pop my UAV, but I don't know if it's going to be worth it for one kill. There he is. He kind of showed himself there. Ran out the tunnels, like I said. And he's probably going to try to parachute away. So i got to try to catch him just in time. Bounty never moved, so get a little smarter. So if we go fields, we can get a lot of kills. So I'm going to try to go to that one original orange ping that I had marked. Right above the silo here. And I'm going to try to get quite a few kills here, actually. It appears one guy is directly on top of it, right here on my orange mark. So I'm going to try to land on the back side. He's sniping, so he probably has an SMG as a secondary. Get a little bit slower. I don't think he knows I'm here. Totally oblivious, so we'll kill him. There's another guy sniping right here. I don't know exactly what to do. You can pick up that sniper. You can shout or you can wait a minute. Make it seem like you left. Go push. Simple bait. Um, we have one guy in the farm still. We have one guy in the bunker warehouse. I'm going to go for this guy first. We're going to work top to bottom again. do this. So what I was doing there, it's called snaking. If you continuously prone and stand back up, it's going to be hard for your enemy to tell exactly when you're going to peek and where you're going to peek from. It helps a ton. Um, I'll break that more. I'll break down that because of a kill uh, later on in the game too. Alright, so the next guy was down here in the bunker warehouse. What you can do for this building is just jump off this little ledge and you can play the rooftop, peek through the hole. Unless he's sitting in the bunker, you should be able to get every angle covered and know exactly where it is you have to fight from. But it appears he might be inside the bunker. Um, and we're not going to push that because it will get you killed. We got a cluster from pretty far um, inside fields. I'm going to try to rotate a little bit and get an angle that he might not be expecting because he's going to think that the cluster is going to clear it for him completely. 
Pretty sure it was more to the right, over here. Yeah, so that's probably him right here. That's the guy who used the cluster. I'm gonna see if he crosses the road right here, and if he does, it should be a pretty quick kill. He's inside that building right now. Quick down. This nade should be perfectly timed to down him. Alright, he got out. I hit another cluster too. I mean, I was clustered up. I'm gonna try to get into this building here. Get a buy station. Right, there's a guy actually on me, so... That's a perfect example of using the slide technique we talked about earlier to slide behind cover and break his camera completely because he thought I was going to continue running. But what I did was I ran through, ran back, and I used my slide cancel, so it just works out. It breaks the camera, it confuses your enemies, and it'll get you kills. We got a lot of guys around us. I don't know if they're all on the ground. These two are definitely on the ground, so I think I might push this for some kills. The one guy directly above is going to be flying. This is a crazy, crazy zone right now. But you can definitely play this little window here and cover every angle you need to. Alright, he kind of lost his high ground there. I'm going to run into cover because this guy may push. There's two of them, actually. The nice thing about tempered is I can get instantly out of a fight like that and back into another one just by plating twice. Saves me a lot of time um, trying to re-engage and such. Alright, now I think I'm worried about these guys because that one is ghosted in the car, it seems. I'm going to bait the car. We got one guy flying above us. He's not worried about me right now, though. That's a free kill. Two more pings. Get a free kill out of him. This is just insanity right now. There's so many people around, but it's kind of perfect because it shows that if you stick around one area but continuously switch positions, you can easily win these fights because people are just going to be pushing from every direction thinking it's going to be a free kill. So right now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to... I think I want to play for that buy station again, but it's going to be kind of difficult because of how many people are around trying to regain and get their stuff back. Um, so I'm going to try to play it very slowly. I'm pretty sure there was, somebody was in here, actually, so... Very quickly get my UAV. There is someone in here still. Trick him a little bit. Totally caught him off guard again with the slide cancels. If you do the little bait and switch, when you do a little, little dash like that, it just confuses him. Works 99% of the time. There's a guy watching the buy station from this little yellow house. And it's kind of making me nervous. So I think... Yeah, that box kind of protected me, so... I was able to buy two more UAVs and make my way to this warehouse. Someone is in there, and there are two people surrounding me, so... I was flying. I'm trying to get him get some damage off. I'm going to try to make my way to this warehouse with the cover behind me. I can kill him on the way in. And then the guy behind me, I can hold him now. This guy is not inside the warehouse, but outside. Might be trying to make his way back in. Alright, so he's one shot. Try to make my way over to him. Again, another free kill. This guy might push into me or rotate up a little bit. But either way, I'm on a head glitch and ready. And there's one directly in the house behind me that I got to look out for. I need a portable buy station. That would be extremely helpful. I could buy pretty much everything I need. I need more Semtex. I need a munitions. Um, more UAV would be amazing. But that guy luckily pushed in a little bit, so I'm going to try to make my way in. That one guy made it out. Probably sitting in one of those bushes, if I had to guess. But with this zone, 
Um, I'm gonna have to take into consideration that there's gonna be someone on every single angle, more than likely. I'm getting shot from almost every direction right now. Um, I'm pretty sure someone's in that house, which is kind of confusing because I thought I killed the guy in there, but there could have been a ghosted one. There's one more in there. I'm going to hold him. And I'm going to do a wide rotation with the zone. So what that does, the rotations with the zone, is people typically tend to just push straight into the zone. But when you run the outside like this, they're not going to expect a single thing unless they have a UAV. It's called the pinwheel rotation. Shout out to Iceman Isaac for making a super in-depth video on that but uh by doing so we're gonna be able to push into this building pretty successfully hopefully with all the cover we can get a kill on this guy real fast i'm dead i died unless this guy saved my life so this pds is going to keep me alive for 20 seconds i'm going to use this time to get myself all situated that's why you always have a self res. Super, super helpful. These bushes here aren't really cover, but they will keep you hidden. There is a guy in this house I have to play very careful of. Because he would have killed me if I did not prioritize killing him. Okay, so now I have a gas mask again. I have ammunitions. I'm going to use the munitions because I don't have any lethal or tactical. There's three people left. One's shooting over there. Like a madman. I want to guess one's in here. A little thing just let me find out there is in fact somebody in there very very easy kill there and i do have a gas mask so what i'm going to do is make my way over it's a riot shield remember earlier how i said there's too many riot shields I think I'm dead to the zone, unfortunately. I can't slide cancel. He's just letting me live. Play your distance on riot shielders. If they can't stun you, they can't win. But he's gonna kill me. And it's just game over like that because people like to use riot shields. But either way, if I had fought pretty much anybody else there, I probably could have won that, but there's not much you can do to riot shielders, let's be honest. We still ended up dropping 35. The rotations were perfect. The end game was played perfectly, no matter how many people around me, still got them all killed. Um, but I used my grenades to kill the guy in the shack. It uh, kind of ruined the, the chance of me killing the riot shielder at the end, but... Either way, I was still able to pull off a lot of rotations there, get a lot of kills, and uh, played that pretty perfectly. Um, the one thing that I wish happened right there was that I wish my loadout stayed up. I could have grabbed another stim, and I would have replayed it with Tempered, um, which would have kept me alive longer. I could have done a bigger rotation, but I was forced to run directly into zone right into him. If I had that extra stim, I could have done so much more. So for this part of the video, I'm going to be breaking down certain kills and my rotations in the late game of the live commentary. And where we're going to start is when I first started pushing in fields and why I won the fight that I did on the buy station. Get a buy station. Right, this guy actually on me, so. So first things first, when I push into the building, you can hear that the guy is hiding behind the door because he does shoot at me, which means he does have quite limited visibility because of the shelving unit in the door. There's only a small gap that you can see me from. So the first thing I did was I went behind the shelving unit for cover. So I was completely covered and he couldn't shoot me. Then I slide canceled behind the counter. So I had a head glitch that I could fight him on. 
Get so when I push through, you can hear him shoot me. I stop behind this shelving unit here. I do a 180 to make sure he's not following me. And then I slide cancel behind that counter so I have even more cover when I decide to fight. Okay, this guy actually on. And here, the guy expects me to completely run around the building and not try to fight him. So he's going to try to see if I try to run outside instead of try to come back in and fight. And because he was watching that doorway, I was able to kill him very, very easily just by shooting him in the back. So immediately after that fight, I decided to buy a UAV just so I have some information on where to rotate and what fights to pick. And as you can see on my mini map, there are a ton of pings and I decided to push the two guys fighting in the warehouse because I felt that would be the easiest one to push. And the reason I think that is because those two people in that warehouse are inevitably going to be fighting each other and not focused on me. So when I decide to push the warehouse, I get a little bit closer and I get on more elevated ground. You can see that one of the people in the warehouse are rotating out while the one guy is still on the second story of the warehouse because of the small arrow above his character. So what I decided to do is I jump on the boxes and peek through the window of the warehouse to try and see if I can get a few shots off and just try to get him low health. But when I peek the window, this guy decides to get aggressive as well and gets me pretty low HP. So when I run away to go behind cover, I use a stim, wait a second to try and listen if he's pushing, and he doesn't, he tries to run away. So I push back with my stim, I'm full health, and I get to shoot him a couple times in the back. So when I reach out, he's completely running away. I get a few shots off, and then I easily get the kill here while he's trying to mantle onto those boxes for a quick high ground. So immediately after that fight, I decide to look at my UAV again, and I have so many people around me, and I don't know which one to push. So the first thing I do is I check and see what everybody's doing. I have two guys below me, one at the buy station and one in the warehouse directly to my left. Then I have two guys on my level directly next to me in the field. So I figure one of them's gonna push after hearing that fight go down. So what I do is I set myself in a position where I'm a little bit higher up and it's harder for the enemy to see. And he runs right through this little alleyway right on top of me to where I'm able to just get a few shots off. And if you get those first few shots, as long as you're accurate, you're going to win the fight more than likely. Immediately after that fight, I decide to go back to the warehouse, pop my UAV and try to get more information to see where I wanna go next. And what I noticed is a car is pulling up and when the UAV is popped, I still have that one ping of the guy sitting in the field but the car guy does not show up. So that means there are two more people still on my level right on the other side of the building. So at this point, I was able to see both pings and then one of them disappear. So that means the one guy did win the fight, meaning there's only one person left. After a few seconds, this guy does try to sprint across in the open and I get a few shots on him. So I do decide to get a little bit aggressive because he's either going to be panicking or he's going to be low HP. So the way that I push this fight is that I do want to get high ground. So I go on top of the hut, allowing me to rotate any direction I want and maintain cover while in the fight. I saw him for a split second. I see he's still plating. I get a free few shots on him because I was able to rotate any which way I wanted to. And then I also get a free kill here while this guy's trying to fly in. So instantly after that fight, I decided to check my radar again. And I noticed that there are two people down below by the buy station. One is flying above in the sky and then there's three people behind me. So what I want to do is I am out of information after this UAV is done. So I want to make my way down towards the buy station before the zone closes and get as much utility as possible. So what I do is I run down to the buy station knowing that the warehouse behind me is clear because I just killed everybody around it and I wanna pop a UAV before I push anything to make sure that the people are still in the places that I thought. So once I pop the UAV, I do notice that there is a guy closer to my left. So I do have to be careful that I don't get shot out in the open by him. But there is also that one guy that was inside of the building on the buy station. So I have to make sure I play for him and try to get control of this because everybody's going to try to migrate to this to try to get that UAV just as I did. Very quickly get my UAV. There is someone in here still. Trick him a little bit. Totally caught him off guard again with the slide cancels. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide cancel. I'm going to see the guy on the right side. I'm going to pretend to leave, come back, Trick him a bake bit. the right side of the shelf, totally caught him off come back, again with the slide go cancels. left, and then I'm able to just completely throw him off guard. He has no idea where to shoot. So again, I'm going to rewind it real fast. I'm going to go to the right side. He's going to peek the right. Totally caught him off guard and then I'm going to go back, cancels. go left, if you do the little and push switch, behind him to try and break his camera with another slide cancel. So at this point, when I decided to push left hard, I slide canceled right into him. So it's going to completely catch him off guard, me being so aggressive. And it just so happens he had to reload too. So he got overly aggressive without countering anything I'm doing. So the next thing I do immediately after that fight is I use my radar again for a little bit more information. And I notice there is a guy overlooking the buy station on both my right and my left. The left warehouse is a little bit less likely to see me because there's fences, there's boxes, there's doors, and everything was closed. So I made sure to check everything to make sure he couldn't shoot me. The next thing I had to worry about was this guy in the house here, but I also had that set of boxes covering that building from overlooking the buy station. So I decided to buy more UAVs 
and then I could easily make my way into the next warehouse. But once I do start making my way to the warehouse closest to zone, I noticed that the guy that was in the building trying to overlook the buy station is also pushing. So I'm going to try and find cover and make sure that I can stop him from going into the warehouse as well. So what I did was I used the shack directly behind me for cover from the guy in the warehouse behind me. And I find this guy easily in the open. He has no plates, it's a free pickup. But as soon as I kill him, I have to realize that there's a guy in the shack directly on the other side in the zone. And again, just by playing smart and knowing that this guy is going to be looking for me after that fight, I do want to play this very slow. So I get second floor on the warehouse and I get an easy peek on this guy at the shack. And he is trying to find exactly where to go. So I shoot him in the back a couple times. He hides behind the shelf and I decide to push that because I do want to get control of the zone. I don't want to be outside of the zone for this. He runs yeah, into me, I get a free kill, and I'm able to try and spot this guy from the warehouse way, behind me to catch him off guard while he's rotating into the zone. Behind and eventually I do see him, I get a few shots off, I don't get the kill, but he is very low, so I'm able to push freely to the right, knowing that he's going to be running away. But there is one thing that I do have to be aware of, and there is somebody in that house right above me on the hill, so I have to make sure that I play that correctly and make sure I play it patiently. Now, so I did end up finding this guy in the field running away from the house, so I thought it was the guy that was in the house, but if you remember from the game, there ended up being two more people around there. So this is where you do have to be careful of people having ghosts because of the late game, a lot of the people that have ghosts will be alive and just lurking about. So with this guy, I get a really quick kill. I think he's the guy in the house. So I go directly for his loot, trying to make my way more into the zone. And I want to take over this shack right after I get this loot because I want to make sure that I'm holding as many people as I possibly can. And with the cover in here, I'm able to do so. But while I try to peek and see if there's anybody further to the left or the right, I try to jump through the window and I instantly see this rose skin looking me in the eyes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get out of that challenge. And I'm going to try to find him from a different angle to try and catch him off guard and get a few shots in. Now, I peek the right side of the shack and I do end up getting a few shots, but it's not enough to kill. So I stop peeking. I'm able to use the shack for my own protection while he has to cross in the open. I get a couple plates on and I fight him at the end. So while I'm plating up from this fight, I also notice that I'm getting shot at from southeast, which is directly across the zone from me. So there are people watching this general area. Luckily, when we do face check again, he doesn't have any plates on because of this, because people are shooting at him from across the zone. He's not able to play it up the same way I did, so I got a free kill here. So one more time, I decided to check the edge of the zone just to make sure that my back was completely clear. You never want to push if you're not 100% sure. So what I did was I looked behind me and I ended up seeing another person inside of that house. So it could have been the same guy that I saw in the UAV a long time ago. So he eventually ends up showing his entire body in the window. I get a free kill and it allows me to rotate even further alongside the zone. So by doing so, when you rotate alongside the zone, you're able to clear everybody that's waiting to the last second to get into this zone. So you don't have to worry about any rats potentially ruining your game because you didn't check your back long enough. So like I said, there are always those people who like to wait till the last second to rotate out of zone. This is one of those people. He's waiting inside of this house because he feels safe. He's hiding in the doorway. It's a very, very easy hold, but I do end up messing up a little bit for this fight. Now, when I am holding him, I get a little bit better positioned by the shack inside of the zone. But what I did wrong was I had the wrong weapon out. This guy is a little bit past the Blixen's most effective range. So this is the reason I lost the fight. When I do get into this one, he ends up being able to turn and burn me. I put a couple shots into the rock, but this is exactly why you always want to have self res because in this tide of a zone, there are so many people left. There's eight people. He gets pulled by somebody else, does not see me. He thinks that he just got a kill. I'm able to get up really easily. I have a PDS system, which lasts 20 seconds in the zone. So I put this down in here. I'm able to regenerate my health, put on some plates, and I can push back in. So after I get all situated and plated back up, I decide to go back into the zone on the edge and sit in this set of bushes because it will keep me hidden the reason i didn't push into this house is because one i knew that guy was in there from that most previous kill and two he had a deployable in that window so he is bunkered down and he's probably been here a while could have claymores could have bouncing bettys could have anything so what i decided to do is i decided to go down the hill and keep myself as protected as possible from any other angle because there are still four other people alive so this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one fight right here with nobody else pitching into this fight so i'm able to win it pretty easily and then i'm able to make a rotation plate up and do whatever i need to do so from that fight i was able to get a gas mask with two more ticks a munitions box so i have full stims and double semtex grenades and what i do is i decided to try to clear everything around me again so what i noticed is this shack had a explosive canister in it and it also had a deployable. So with that deployable, there could be somebody in there. So I decided to shoot the explosive canister to get a little bit of information. And I do end up getting a hit marker. But this is where I kind of messed up for the late game. When I decide to push, I throw both of my Semtex grenades inside of this shack when I should have probably only thrown one. 
This guy was an extremely easy kill because I knew he was in there. He hadn't ran. Both my Semtex hit him. And all I had to do was put one bullet in. Now, again, this is where I think I messed up. But the reason I had my Blixen out was because I thought that I would just have to rotate and try to get into zone as fast as possible. But he let me get some shots. And if I had my Automaton out, I probably could have won. But again, I just used the Blixen at my least effective range, which is probably why I hadn't killed him here. I decided to use my stims to try and get into the zone. Try to stay in the zone as long as possible. Stay away from his flash grenades. Make him waste all of his utility. The only way that he can kill me is if he hits me with a stun or he sticks me with a thermite. So what I do is I decide to run towards my loadout. He hits a stun. I pop a stim. Go for the loadout. The loadout disappears. So I can't get my temper class and I can't get my extra stim. Which forces me to run directly into the zone. Which he is right there on the edge. Now this is what I meant by if I had my Semtex still. I was able to just throw it at him and kill him. But I used both of them on that one guy sitting in the middle of the shack. So if I had done two things differently, if I had the automaton out, or if I had saved my Semtex, I probably could have won this game. But instead, he decides to punish me for it, and I get killed. So some key takeaways that I hope you did learn through this breakdown was that you do always want to make sure that you are, one, looking for high ground when you got it, and using your surroundings as cover. And hopefully I did go in depth enough with the rotations that you guys do understand what's going through my mind. And if you want me to go through another one of those, I will gladly do so. And that goes for anything in this video. If you want me to go more in depth on a certain topic, just let me know down in the comments below and I'll dedicate an entire video to it. But if you did find this video helpful at all, make sure you guys do leave a thumbs up on it. It helps me out a ton. And if you guys are going to be playing Warzone 2, I am going to be making videos just like this one on that game as well. So make sure you guys subscribe and turn notifications on so you guys are aware of when I post those. But that is pretty much going to end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.